Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Anything with Alvin. This week we're going to be making a giant 18 pound fried chicken and rice bowl, which is served in a restaurant in Saitama, Japan. This restaurant is very popular for a large giant size servings. And I think the owner's message of wanting to make people happy with lots of food is something I can definitely relate to. I think this is going to be a very fun episode. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and supporting the BCU from the very beginning. I'm excited to announce my new website, babi.sh, or as I like to call it, babi.sh. The ultimate destination for all things BCU. There's all the recipes from my videos, exclusive new recipes. You can search by genre or ingredient. You can even toggle between US and metric and scale the serving size. We heard your feedback about everything you wanted from the site, so that's what we did. You can get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. All right, let's get started. Now we have a lot of ingredients here, which means there's quite a lot of tasks that need to be done. First, we're gonna make the marinade for the karage or Japanese style fried chicken. For this, we're gonna first and go ahead and microplane 12 cloves of garlic, because this is a very heavy garlic flavor. Also going to peel and microplane about two inches of ginger. These are gonna be the main aromatics that will really flavor that chicken through and through. That's gonna go into a bowl, combining with one half cup of soy sauce, one half cup of sake, one fourth cup of meat, and one half half cup of sugar and two tablespoons of good old MSG for some extra flavor. Once the marinade is nice and mixed together, it tastes really good by the way, we're going to go ahead and work on our chicken. Now for this chicken, I've usually found that karage uses boneless but skin on chicken thighs, which are super delicious once marinated and fried up. So we're going to use about six pounds of this chicken, taking each of these thighs and cutting it into fairly large chunks. In the video, it seemed like the fried chicken was quite on the larger side, so we're going to go ahead and stick to that premise. Once all of this chicken has been cut up and slice that's going to go directly into the marinade tossed around a bit to make sure that the marinade coats everything and into the fridge for about 30 minutes to one hour at least to let the flavors soak through now in the video they definitely served a huge portion of rice this time we're going to go ahead and cook four cups of rice in a rice cooker now we have to make sure that we wash the rice first though that is rule number one go ahead and give it a rinse in the sink until the water runs clear then back into the rice cooker with the water level that reaches about one length of your pinky above the surface now to combat all that fried chicken in the bowl a really common topping that is served with fried foods is a giant mound of cabbage, thinly, thinly sliced with some lemon. So here I have a cabbage and I'm attempting to slice this as thinly as possible so that way you can just eat it as almost a side salad with your fried food. Our chicken has been marinating for about one hour or so, so this part we're going to go ahead and take it out and add in some potato starch, not flour, not cornstarch, but potato starch, about three cups worth. Because once this fries up, you get these nice little craggly bubbles and a nice chewy gelatinous coating underneath which makes for a really fun texture that you don't get with normal flour. And the best part is the marinade doesn't get dumped out. You're actually mixing the starch into the marinade to form a batter that'll be delicious for the chicken itself. So all that flavor just gets locked in. Before we fry the chicken, we do have some other ingredients to prepare for the stir fry and the final plating of the bowl. First is the stir fry, which seems to be more of like a pork stir fry with some onions and Chinese chives, not scallions. So we have a bunch of Chinese chives, which are a lot more mild than scallions. They're not a punch at all they're just really mellow and delicious cut these into nice little matchsticks and go ahead and slice this pork that we got from the store and that's already been pretty thinly sliced but we're going to cut this even more into half then we're going to go ahead and boil four eggs aiming for a soft boil so that's going to be about six minutes and 45 seconds and in the same boiling water we're going to quickly blanch some bean sprouts for about a minute or so approximately three cups this is a nice little bed that's going to absorb all those flavors from the stir fry and any of that from the chicken that goes on top of the rice underneath all that good Goodness. All right, now it's time to fry the chicken. We're going to go ahead and drop this chicken into approximately 350 to 375 degree Fahrenheit oil, depending on how hot your burner is as the chicken will cool this down. That's going to go in until every part of the chicken has now turned a beautiful golden brown. We're going to take that out and let that rest on a tray lined with a rack and some paper towels to drain off. This is going to take some time as we do have a lot of chicken and we don't want to overcrowd this pan, but you have to make sure that each portion of chicken is fried evenly, crispily, and goldenly all the way through. Those are not words, but now they are. While the chicken has been fried, it is now resting to cool down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and work on our stir fry. First into a flaming wok, we're going to go with a couple tablespoons of oil and throw in our pork, making sure that this barely cooked through before we start to proceed with the other ingredients. After realizing that this wok might cause a lot of liquid to stay at the bottom and steam the pork, I'm going to go ahead and try to expand the surface area by dividing this portion into two woks instead. That way we can get a lot more evaporation and less of that steamy bubbly liquid stuff that ends up at the bottom a lot of 
stir fries. Add about three yellow onions that have been sliced relatively rustically and add our beautiful sauces and seasoning. Soy sauce, oyster sauce, MSG, sugar, and half the amount of white pepper as that can be quite a bit strong. I wish I could actually tell you the exact amounts I use, but for this kind of stuff, especially when stir frying, really everything is just by eye. It's a little bit hard to explain, but the best part is you can always just taste it and adjust it depending on what it needs or what it has too much of. And since the chives don't need that long to cook, those are gonna get thrown in closer to the end, just so we can break the rawness and allow the aromas of the green stuff to go in with the other stuff. Very scientific. All right, and that's actually pretty much much it as far as cooking goes it is time to assemble and hopefully make this plate carryable our rice has been done so we're gonna go ahead take that out from the cooker and mount up a nice big portion on top of the rice goes our blanched bean sprouts from earlier serving as a sponge and a flavor absorber for the rest of the food then we're gonna take the stir fryer from the pot and dump it all onto one half of the portion like they did in the video and then mound the cabbage on the other side of the plate on top of which which all of the chicken that we fry will rest now this this is a lot of chicken. I think alone, if you combine the chicken and the batter, it's probably about eight pounds of chicken right here, including all that liquid and flour. And after the chicken has been kind of tetris into place and is definitely a lot higher than the stir fry side, we're gonna go ahead and crack open these beautiful soft boiled eggs right down the middle. Make a little trail or a little divider to tell you that one side of the plate is goodness and the other side of the plate is another pile of goodness. And final touch would be a nice half of a lemon that will be squeezed on top of the chicken and the cabbage as we consume this beauty. And I present to you our interpretation of that giant 18 pound fried chicken stir fry rice bowl that they serve in this amazing restaurant in Japan. Now upon seeing this, I can definitely agree with the owner. When you have food like this in such a large quantity that looks delicious, it, uh, it can't help but bring a smile to someone's face. So without further ado, let's dig in. Now the stir fry is insanely delicious. Whether it was the vegetables or the sauces that were just really flash fried with some pork in the wok, this stuff was so addicting that I could have ate it forever with the rice underneath. The bean sprouts also served as a really nice sponge to absorb any of that extra juice that would leak down into the rice. The chicken is also very good as well. It's juicy, it's crispy, it's more flavorful than typical fried chicken because the marinade itself actually became the batter that is really addicting to eat. Now I definitely can't eat all of this, and this dish served in the restaurant is not meant for one person, so I must bring in the rest of the studio to help me out with this. The best part about making these kinds of things is that when everybody in the studio is just going nuts about how good a dish is, that's one of the best feelings you can have. The second best feeling is that when you ask if anybody wants to take stuff home, everybody raises their hands. So after we did as much damage as we could, that is exactly what we're going to do. Pack this up. So everybody is a nice, healthy portion of rice, fried chicken, and pork stir fry for the next day. And if you're lucky, an egg or two. I took two because I like eggs. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. From websites to online stores to domains to analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. All of my websites over the years have been with Squarespace, and I'm excited to share the new one, BABI.SH. We were able to use Squarespace's website builder and custom integrations to create a site that provides a powerful cooking experience. If you want to try Squarespace for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your first purchase.